Sara, I just wondered how you first um, kind of responded to the acres of landscape here at Jupiter. Typically, if anybody knows my work, make quite delicate constructions with metal and sometimes wire and collage and assemblage and they've fin been finished normally by the gallery space in a way so there's an openness and a, sometimes a delicacy about them that wouldn't really survive the outdoors so I was daunted as well as excited and the other part was more a sort of poetic concern I suppose a kind of wanting to find a sort of empathy with the space, a sort of feeling how this acted, how it became a material in itself, how the earth and the trees and the ferns and the sky was given a kind of a quality with the brass and the glass that I thought would become the sculpture. Did you walk around many times to, to find this site and how, how, how was your thinking when you were actually working in a space and we looked uh, initially when it was spring and the trees are still very kind of skeletal. I think I, I'd made that thing at first where I kind of thought the gallery is one environment and the outdoors is another and I hadn't appreciated the subtleties of how the environment changed even you know these kind of microclimates that existed at Jupiter. The glass became so important because for to, to deal in quite um, slim metals and to deal with the weather and these kind of conditions I needed to find a way to support those metal elements that I felt would still wouldn't just be kind of um, putting this weighty sculpture down in the ground with, without any kind of awareness of how the material around it could become part of it. There had to be a real kind of inserting and incorporating of this kind of of the green of the trees so the reflection of that almost um, the piece becomes a mirror of that. To talk about painting for a minute I think that is a really important part of the work and a, a part that I wasn't sure how successful it could be outside because it's to me begins you know in you know the studio and a gallery environment and you're used to seeing paintings inside but it's very much part, it's my it's the way I'm able to I suppose finish a sculpture and um, activate a sculpture in a way almost to so that my hand and my action is very much connected to the finished work these sort of liminal thin lines of dense colour and movement could be almost like opening yeah a kind of crack in a door where you're seeing into somewhere else. And the title Patterns, I mean I was sort of aware that without knowing the poem that I borrowed the title from, um, probably the pattern that you'd think of would be your own reflection and the kind of the patterns that are made as you're kind of moving around the work with the reflections of nature and I'm quite happy for that to be all that you know. Amy Lau's an imagist poet and there's a really nice part in it where uh, one of the verses I think it goes I too am rare pattern so walk down garden paths my dress is richly figured and leaves a pink and silver stain in the gravel. This is this really kind of delicate reference to those kind of I always see them as kind of arts and crafts you know the kind of colours of sort of Virginia Woolf and Vanessa Bell and those sort of they kind of reveal another maybe a sort of quite a female palette and often it's female writers that I'm interested in. So there's so much else at work that's kind of really bringing that thing to life. It's been amazing. Thanks. Thank <laughs> very nice. Thank you Susanna. <laughs>